Uh, everyone remember a year ago, we had a bunch of bank failures, including oh, yeah. the second and third largest bank failures in U.S. history. That was fun, right? Very. Well, guess what? New York Community Bank, uh, which had bought some of those troubled assets. Um, these guys are unsurprisingly located in New York, unsurprisingly have lots of commercial loans between bad loans on commercial properties because people don't want to go back to the office, right? Uh, office occupancy in New York, Rob, I think it it fell to something like 10% during COVID. I think it's around 50% now, give or take. I don't know. I, I might have, I might have not have the numbers exactly right, but sure. you don't want to be in commercial property right now. New York also has destructive rent control laws that make it really hard to rent to people, to renovate places, to keep places nice. There was a recent court decision um, that was politically based that's driving away property developers you know, where people are saying, you know what, we don't want to do business here, the property developers that are now leaving the city. Um, and in the middle of all this, the market figured out that New York Community Bank, the ticker's NYCB, um, has an asset quality problem. And the fear is that we'll see the same thing we saw last year with First Republic um, and, and Silicon Valley and a couple others, where people worried about the asset quality, they can pull their money out. And the issue with that is if enough people pull their money out, the only way the bank can give people the money they owe them for their deposits is to sell their bond portfolio. And those bond portfolios, a lot of them, you know, unless their duration is short, are underwater, meaning they're trading at less than 100 cents on the dollar. And now you start recognizing losses and there goes the equity from the bank and boy, this is a problem. So that's the chain of events that caused multiple bank failures last year. And uh, last week, a group of investors led by former Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin invested a billion dollars to keep the bank from failing. And they got the stock to bounce from, uh, God, what was it, about two and a half dollars to now just below four dollars. Right. So it's still trading at distressed levels. But, you know, they're hoping that that billion dollars will be enough to bail out the bank and keep them from going under anything your average listener needs to take away from this Gary in terms of okay having your money in banks obviously there's quite a bit of insurance on you know a lot of bank uh on these banks with the FDIC and whatnot any takeaways at least for people that are oh we see banks failing right like what does that actually mean for me yeah yeah let's talk about that for a second so first of all um if you have your money in a bank and you have less than $250,000 in that bank, you are insured by the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And, you know, it'll be, you'll be nervous, but you'll get the money back, right? The government will give you the money back. If you have more than that, there are programs that you can take advantage of where your bank will have a program that will spread your money out. So, Let's imagine for a minute, instead of 250,000, you had 2.5 million. What the bank will do if you engage them to do so is they'll spread your money out to 10 different banks, 10 different accounts. And as crazy as that sounds, doing that, guess what? Now your 2.5 million is federally insured. For people who don't want to deal with that and have more, uh, you can go to Treasury Direct. And you can buy treasury bonds and that, you know, you could lose money against inflation, but you won't lose principal on that. Um, for people who are wondering how to do this, I actually put up a guide on Twitter or X um, giving people step by step instructions, literally showing you click this button, red arrows drawn. Uh, we made it as simple as possible for people to follow. So there are lots of things that you can do. The other thing that I would add for people who want to know how to interpret this stuff as all of you know, we are always skeptical of pronouncements by government officials. In this case, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who I'm not a fan of, she's been described <laughs> by our friends at Unicus as the Marie Antoinette of our inflation. Uh, she's constantly reassuring investors that the U.S. banking system remains sound. Despite that, we're still bailing out banks and some of them are still failing. I don't know. Does that, Rob, does that seem sound to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. You know, Ye Yellen's comments, they remind me of uh, that great scene at the end of Animal House with Kevin Bacon, Bacon saying, no one panic, all yeah. is well, everything's fine. Right? Well. As everything goes crazy around him, right? The other thing we linked, 
was that that great scene from the princess bride right where vizini says you know this is inconceivable and inigo montoya says you keep using that word i do not think <laughs> it means what you think it means right <laughs> every time janet yellen says sound right the banking system is sound i all i can think is i don't think that word means what you think it means no doubt no